And hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Before we do get into today's video, as always, make sure you do drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel for more Celtic content. So I hope you are all well. Uh, this is our second video of today. There's been a lot of news to go over um, today with regards to Celtic. A lot's been happening. So we'll discuss all of this today. I want to start today's video by going over uh, Rao Hatate because he recently actually opened up about the difficulties that he faced from going to Ange Postacoglu's dynamic style of play to Brennan Rodgers' more possession-based approach of football. And I thought it was quite interesting uh, what you had to say on the situation because when Brennan Rodgers came back to the club uh, last summer, Atate probably was one of the few players that struggled at first to adapt to the new style of play. Um, of course, at first, Turnbull was starting before we sold him and he scored a couple of goals in the first few games of the season. And um, yeah, Atate was kind of starting more on the bench and he kind of opened up recently about maybe his struggles that he faced during that period of his career. So speaking to Japanese media outlet Sportivia, Hatate shared his wider ambitions in football beyond Celtic and offered a player's perspective on the shift in playing style. Understandably, Rao is ambitious and it comes across as he speaks about his career. There are still higher leagues, so if I can challenge for those leagues, I want to do so, he said. Unless I aim for that, there is no point in me continuing as an athlete. I want to keep aiming high. I'd like to play in the Premier League as well as in Spain or Italy. And of course, speaking about last season and how the transition between managers brought a bit about significant changes in the team's tactical approach, Atate highlighted how Postacoglu's emphasis on direct, fast and football starkly contrasted with Rodgers' focus on ball retention and control. He continued, The biggest part of the game was that, in Ange's time, the first thing we did was play goal-oriented football. We were told to go vertical as much as possible, but Rodgers' coaching style is very much about the ball, even in situations where you can attack quickly. The first priority is to keep the ball. I believe that is the main change. The midfielder further pointed out how the new style led to fewer goals and crosses compared to in the previous season. This adjustment period under Rodgers was a challenge for the whole squad. He continued, There was also obvious differences like the fact that fewer goals were scored from crosses compared to the 2022-23 season. I think it was a difficult season as it was the first year with Rodgers as manager back. If I had to say, it was more a sense of keeping the good parts of the previous team and trying to adapt to what the new coach wanted to do. That's why we struggled in the beginning, but as we worked on it, we came to understand what each other wanted to do. As a team, we have found a good response, but we also wanted to do more. Personally, I enjoyed the more aggressive and faster goal-oriented style of football, but I also discovered new things, including how to take care of the ball. So it was a good experience, Hatate finished off. So, um, yeah, at the start of the season, of course, Rogers, when he made his return. It was a very slow start. There's a few games where we weren't performing to the standards that we should have been. And of course, that would be due to the, the massive contrast and style of football that we were playing. And as I mentioned, Hatate was one of the players I thought struggled a little bit at the start of the campaign, even starting on the bench for the first few games of the season. And of course, adding to that tactical change, Hatate was struggling with a few injuries throughout the campaign as well. He missed a significant portion of playing time not long after the season had started as well. And after making a comeback, he was sidelined again with another injury. But despite these hurdles, he managed to play 16 matches, scored three goals and provided four assists, helping Celtic finish strong. So not a terrible season for Tate. Definitely not his best in a Celtic shirt. I think the season before with Ange Postacoglu's last campaign was his best. But he'll be a key player for us this season. And I thought it was quite interesting. He highlighted how he has massive ambitions to play in the Premier League, Italy or Spain, um, which we kind of expect of players like himself that are very very good and got a very high ceiling we know that he wants to play in other leagues as well um but it's quite surprising to see how open he is about it but i think he's safe this summer i think he'll be a celtic player of course for next season no doubt about that in my mind personally um and hopefully he has a great campaign i wonder if he'll be the star performer this season there's always one player that kind of shines through of course this year was matt O'Reilly. the season before was jota it always seems to happen when a lot of speculation comes around those players so it could be a target next campaign uh, next season so let's discuss this Costa Rican player again. So Andy Rojas, of course, the 18-year-old Costa Rican, actually the youngest ever um, Costa Rican to ever play in a Copa America game. Very big achievement there for him. And of course, we spoke about Celtic's interest in him and how a lot of teams were kind of um, looking at him as well. Celtic wanted to sign him initially for £800,000. That is kind of what they wanted to pay for him. But since then, his current club's president spoke out saying that there's a lot of teams interested and they will demand more than £800,000 for his services. And of course, him playing for Costa Rica at the Copa America will add more eyes to him and more, more suitors will want to maybe 
look at him and scout him a bit further and see what they can see what he can bring to their team potentially. Um, so we don't know the exact teams that have made bids for them, but there's currently two teams that have put a bid in for Andy Rojas, and Celtic isn't currently one of those. This is frustrating, of course. We wanted to get him very cheap, under a million, but it looks like now it'll be around three to four million pounds for this player. Um, we know that one team is in Portugal, so it could be one of the big teams like Benfica. It could be uh, Porto, of course, or Sport in Lisbon. They always have a great eye for um, a talent as well. And, and you know, in America, North America and South, they always get good players from across there. They develop them and then they sell them on for massive amounts of profit. I mean, look at Benfica's selling history in the last few years. It's absolutely crazy. Um, so we want to get there nice and early and try and get this player. And we, we can probably offer him more game time than these big Portuguese clubs as well, if it is the Benficas, if it is the Portos that are after him. Um, but yeah, we will have to pay a lot more than £800,000 for him. And we will be in a massive bidding war for him as well. I'm sure if we put a bid in for him, someone else put a higher bid in and so on, so on and so forth. Um, but as I mentioned earlier with this guy, it's, it's a strange one because, of course, it, it could be an exciting addition for the future. He could be a great player for us in many years to come. But it's definitely not the priority right now. We need to really focus on getting first-team players in through the door. And this should be a second thought right now, um, Andy Rojas, which is annoying because... I mean, apart from him and Adam Ida, the transfer news has been very, very quiet around the club. And it's it's quite concerning, especially when we know that we need a goalkeeper like right now for this preseason as it's getting closer and closer. Well, we start preseason, but for the American tour, it's getting closer and closer. So we knew that we need a, we need a keeper to train with the team for preseason. As I mentioned, my biggest concern was when Joe Hart retired would be that we would uh, get into the transfer window and not get a goalkeeper early doors, wait till like the last few days of the transfer window and sign someone on loan or sign someone on cheat from the championship as their backup goalkeeper. It's, it's, it's not good. It's not good business, by, good business by Celtic right now. And the interest in uh, keepers is pretty quiet around the club. Of course, the Bravka was probably the leading name at the moment, but that's gone quiet as well. And we are instead focusing on young players like Andy Rojas. It just seems like our priorities are a bit mixed up right now. Um, of course, Adam Ida as well. That's been big talk as well. That's a good focus. We need to get Adam Ida in through the door. Um, so no, you know, no issues with that transfer whatsoever. But definitely look at getting a goalkeeper in, a defender, um, but first team quality ones as well, not these project players. But I would like Andy Rojas at the club. Obviously, he could be a good player for us, but definitely not a priority right now. And there would be a big bit of more, and it could maybe take our attention off other more important positions on the pitch that we need to improve on. Um, but as always, let me know your thoughts and everything we discussed in today's video. Um, do you think... Andy Rojas is worth going after, yes or no, um, regardless of the fact we need other players in, in other positions. And also, what do you make of Hatate's season last year? Do you think he could be a standout player for us this campaign, yes or no? Comment down below. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel for more Celtic content. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.